Today I'm going to answer the question, 600s or 1000s, which one's better? It's possibly the most commonly asked question I get on track days, what's better, a 600 or a 1000? I'm going to break this video down into seven key areas that I think are important to take into consideration when you're deciding whether you should have a 600 or a 1000cc bike. So let's start with 600cc bikes. I raced them in the British Super Sport Championship between 2012 and 2014 and it's where a lot of young riders in the UK and around the world learn their crafts on four-stroke bikes. Modern 600s are typically slightly smaller than a 1000cc bike so it's great for younger riders that are learning their craft in racing or track day riders as well that are learning their craft to start on something that's slightly smaller that you feel like the boss of before moving on to a thousand. Obviously they have less power than a thousand cc bike but less power isn't always a bad thing. 600s can be slightly more forgiving as they have less power so on the side of the tyre it's harder to spin a 600 up than it is a thousand which makes them more forgiving and a little bit more user friendly for people that are new to riding on track or people that are just trying to learn their craft on something slightly smaller before they move on to a 1000cc bike. If we move on to super bikes now or 1000cc bikes, I've raced those for the last seven years from 2015 to 2021 in the British Superbike Championship and the National Superstock 1000 Championship. I absolutely love riding 1000cc bikes and to someone that was a complete novice to the world of motorbike racing or riding you'd automatically assume that having a faster bike would make you faster around a racetrack but that's not always the case especially in the world of track day riding. I think for a lot of people it's actually easier to go faster on a 600 than it is on a 1000cc bike and the reason I say that is a normal modern day 1000cc bike or superbike will roughly have around 200 horsepower they might have slightly less than that a superbike that we race in British superbikes has probably got around 220 horsepower. If you compare that to a super sport bike or just any road going 600cc bike, they're typically going to have between 100 and 140 horsepower. I think world super sport bikes have got just over 140 horsepower. So the best 600s in the world are still 60 horsepower down on a superbike, even a, a road street bike that you can buy now, they'll have 200 horsepower as well. And for anyone that's ridden a 1000cc bike, you'll know what a difference that extra 60 horsepower makes. Suddenly, on the side of the tyre, the bike becomes a lot more aggressive and you have to really think about how you open the throttle coming off the corners. If you've only ever ridden 600s and then you jump onto a 1000, the bike will begin to wheelie in places that you never thought it would wheelie before. There's lots of little examples of where that becomes apparent. Places like Alton Park, there's lots of little lumps and bumps around Alton and suddenly your bike starts wheeling in places that makes it really awkward to ride that you wouldn't have noticed riding a 600. And it's the same coming off the corners. 600s can spin up and they can still slide, but you'll notice it happening a lot more easily on a 1000cc bike. And you have to be a lot more careful in the way that you open the throttle because suddenly on a track that's cold or wet or even in the dry, because it's got so much more power, we'll find it a lot more easier to slide coming off the corners. Now that doesn't mean that 1000cc bikes are some kind of horrible, hideous beast that only Mark Marquez could ever dream of riding. They're actually a lot more forgiving in some circumstances. As they've got such a wide range of power, I mean, really, you can sort of ride a 1,000cc bike as an automatic if you wanted to. If you were a novice to track day riding, you could pull away, put it in third gear, and do the whole lap in third gear, and you wouldn't notice any real complaints. And it's the same as even when you're getting up to speed a little bit more, if you end up in the wrong gear in a corner, if you're on a thousand, you've got more chance of getting out of the corner comfortably than you would on a 600, as there's a wider range of power available to you. The next biggest factor that comes into it is electronics. And a lot of the brand new thousands that are coming out now, like the S1000RR or the ZX10 or the R1, or any thousand for that matter, have got things like traction control, ABS, throttle torque maps, and even hill start on some bikes now. And all these electronic aids, you can still find them on 600s as well, but on thousands, it makes such a difference to the bike that it really does make that bike more accessible to a lot more people. A good example of that is when I've seen novices unknowingly ride bikes in the damp on dry tires and get away with murder. It is astonishing I wouldn't say that bikes are now uncrashable in those circumstances, but I think that's great because that means a lot more people can enjoy riding bikes and get away without crashing a lot more, which means more people can enjoy riding bikes on track. Where I think the problem then occurs is for riders that only ever ride bikes with traction control and ABS. It means if they were ever to jump onto a bike that doesn't have any of those rider aids, 
it'd be really easy to get caught out making a silly mistake or a crash that they wouldn't necessarily know caused it. And if you buy a bike with traction control and you only ever ride one with traction control, then it's not necessarily a problem. If you're someone that really wants to understand how to ride a motorbike and ride one fast and compete at the top level, then I think it's probably better to start with a 600, understand how the tyre works and how much grip you've got and how much power you can use. And once you've sort of got the hang of that and mastered how much power a 600's got and learning to slide a 600 a little bit and understanding when it will spin up, then it's better to move on to a 1000 then because you've got a better understanding of how a tyre works and you'll get away with a lot more on a 600 than you will on a 1000. Handling wise, there isn't a great deal of difference between the two bikes. You may notice that a 600 is slightly smaller and slightly more nimble and a little bit easier to ride, but the main thing that comes into this is how well you've got your bike set up. If you've got a badly set up 1000 and a well set up 600, obviously the 600 is going to feel nicer and vice versa. So handling wise, I wouldn't say that you're going to get on one bike and think this handles like a dream compared to the other one because there isn't that much of a difference. The next factor to consider is the cost. If you compare a Yamaha R1 to the R6, a Yamaha R1 is roughly £5,000 more expensive to buy. So if cost comes into it, and you're looking at a new bike, 600s are slightly cheaper and more affordable, and that is sort of reflected in the used bike market as well. There's less of a difference in used bikes, but newer 1000cc bikes do tend to be more expensive. If we look at the styling of the bikes, in my opinion, it's almost impossible to tell the difference between a 600 and a 1000 now. To the untrained eye, whether you're looking at an R1 or an R6 or the Aprilia RSV4 and an RS660, from a distance, it's very hard to tell the difference and it's only to someone that would know the difference between the bikes that they'd spot a difference. If you pull up to the pub in front of a load of people that know nothing about motorbikes, in my eyes, they would both look like a superbike now. So styling wise, I don't see a great deal of difference between the two. Next up is the running costs of your track day and generally between a 600 and a 1000 there isn't going to be a great deal of difference. You'll use a similar amount of brake pads, a similar amount of fuel. The only thing you might see a difference in is the tyre consumption. A 1000cc bike may chew tyres faster than a 600 as it's got more power going through the tyre and you might get away with running 600 tyres for slightly longer. Although there is more and more track day specific tyres that are coming on the market that do last a long time now. Point number seven is the fun factor for me. And track days now cover such a broad range of people, whether that be complete novices that just wanna take the bike out on the track for the first time, or to your experienced hardcore track day goer that competes, rides on track days regularly, which is becoming more and more popular. If you're aspiring to be the king of track days, then a 1000cc bike is always gonna win that race. But if you're a complete novice to track days, a 600cc bike is still going to give you lots of fun, they're still really fast and you'll experience everything you would experience on a track day with a 1000cc just at a slightly slower pace. I touched on this earlier but a 1000cc bike will wheelie in places where a 600 won't which can be really fun if you're into riding a bike and you like the bike moving about and wheeling and sliding but on the flip side of that if you're a less experienced track rider wheeling can be really daunting and it can mean that tracks that would be quite fun on a 600 suddenly become intimidating and scary places because every time you open the throttle you feel like you're going to do a wheelie when you don't want to and that's when for me a 600 is actually better because you can ride a 600 a lot harder and a lot faster and a lot smoother and that tends to be more enjoyable for people when they can thrash their bike as hard as they possibly can rather than being scared of a big fast superbike. I know for myself when I ride motocross bikes I'm a lot faster on a 250 than I ever would be on a 450 because when I get on a 450 I'm intimidated and scared of it and it's the same on a 600. If you can ride a 600 fast and hard I think in my opinion I take more enjoyment out of that than riding a 1000cc bike slower around the track and being scared of it. Whenever you jump from a 1000cc back to a 600cc bike you do really feel like you're the boss of the bike and you're a lot more in control and you can ride it a lot harder and get away with a lot more so sometimes that is more enjoyable. So in conclusion if you are a complete novice to track days I think 600cc bikes are generally an easier way to get into track riding. You can have more fun on them, you can get away with a lot more and you can gradually learn your craft on a 600 till you feel like you've mastered it before moving on to a 1000cc bike. However, that's not to say that you can't ride a 1000cc bike, as so many of the bikes now have so many different electronic rider aids that it means you can turn the power right down on all the 1000cc bikes now. And if you turn the power down on a 1000cc bike, 
it's going to have a similar amount of power to a 600 anyway. Sometimes I would guess it has even less than a 600. So if you do that, it's actually a really good way of building up slowly with your riding, learning each power mode, learning how fast you can ride it and what happens with the bike. And as you get more confident, you can increase the power, reduce the traction control and feel what that does with the bike. And then if you're somewhere in between, you might find that riding a 600 is actually more enjoyable for yourself because you can ride the bike harder and faster and you may find that there's never any reason to move up to a 1000cc bike. I think the only reason people ever feel the need to is if they're getting annoyed by getting passed on the straights a lot or they are just looking to move up to the next level in track day riding and motorbike riding. And mastering a 1000cc bike can be really rewarding when you do start going faster and you do learn how to slide and wheelie the bike and really understand how you can use the power of the bike properly because 1000cc bikes, to ride them hard and fast is a real puzzle. You have to really think about the power, getting the bike up off the edge of the tyre and using all the available power to you rather than riding it on the side of the tyre, opening the throttle and making the bike spin because that, although it looks cool, is not as fast. If it was up to me, I'd choose a 1000cc as I do enjoy having a slightly bigger bike, I enjoy having more power and wheeling them and sliding them, but I could just throw this into the mix that a 750 may be the answer to all of your problems. A 600 has slightly less power, so the 750 answers that problem that you've got a little bit more power to play with, but it's not quite as big and scary as a 1000cc bike, so 750 may just be the answer to all your problems. Let me know your thoughts below, and if you enjoyed the video, don't forget to subscribe, and I'll be back next week with another video.